Thank you for joining me today. I'm Sean Kerr with cs and Aviation. Before we get too far jumping in to this video series, I want you to understand where my mind is, where I see this video series going, and that is it's just you and me. We're at the fence post. We're talking about our business. And we see a crisis coming down the road, and we're trying to figure out how we're going to manage it, how to deal with it with our businesses. So let's just, with that, dive in. Remember, hard work always pays off. And, and maybe you've heard of this allegory or you're familiar with it. It's about not giving up. It's about two mice falling into a bucket of cream. The first mice ends up giving up and drowning. The second mouse ends up working, staying after, struggling, but stays after. It keeps working that cream until it turns it into butter. And of course, crawls out. As simple as that idea is, be that second mouse, my friend. Be that second mouse. I mean, this is partially where the idea of this title for this video series comes from, and that is, if you don't quit, you can't fail. Frankly, you and I, and probably most anyone else that sees this video, uh, has probably never faced a situation that we're seeing coming down the road, starting to unfold before our eyes. And I, I, I've thought about it for some time, and, and I've tried to figure out how to Bring this idea of a video series together, how to package it, how to have action steps, how to have a plan rather first, and then action steps behind that for helping us to come out of this crisis. Because we will. But first, I need to give credit where credit is due. I've had some great business mentors along the way. Uh, the first two would be Tom Chappell, he's the founder of our agency, Chappell Smith & Associates, and our current CEO is Chris Turnbull. I really appreciate their business savviness, their mindset. Another one is Michael Hyatt. He is a New York Times bestseller. Uh, Chris, you, of course, you probably have heard of John Maxwell and Darren Hardy, both of those New York Times bestsellers. And last but not least, I want to mention a gentleman by the name of Rory Vaden and Elise Archer. Elise Archer and Rory Vaden have uh, part of a company called Brand Builders. And a great company. Elise also has a company by the name of Instant Impact. And I really appreciate how these folks have impacted my life and helped in different ways to be able to pull this video series together. So personally, down the road, I want to be able to, at the next event, at the next conference, what have you, when someone comes up to me and says, hey, Sean, how did you survive COVID-19 and, and, and how did your business grow? Well, I want to be able to answer them and, and, and be able to show them with value those steps, those action plans that I came away with on how I survived COVID-19 and how I could really work through any crisis. So I really believe this series is an excellent time for you and me. And maybe you're like me, you're hungry. You weren't sure where to start. You're, you're hungry to act fast. But again, maybe you weren't sure where to start. And that led me to the idea of, do you remember... The airplane, the Concorde airplane, supersonic aircraft. I don't know if you ever saw the cockpit of that aircraft. And, 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 and maybe, again, you're like me. A ton of buttons. Wasn't sure where to start with this. But I do trust that as we work through a lot of our questions, that we understand that it's a war out there and we've got to be equipped. So to that end, let me ask you a question. Do you run? I, I came across this, uh, this quote. I thought it would be excellent. I, li I like the saying, I guess. Business is a sprint for the opportunity. And then you need 
to be to have the patience of a marathoner. I thought that was great. Again, business is a sprint until you find an opportunity. And then you need to be like a marathoner. Have that patience. So this is an excellent time for us to be preparing. And for us to be thinking, how will we adjust? How will we take our skills? It's a new, it's going to be a new reality. How will we pivot? Take those skills and adjust them. Some people attribute this saying, never let a good crisis go to waste to Winston Churchill. There's opportunities to be had here. And absolutely, I want us to consider those strategies. I want us to make sure that we're uh, flexible, that, that we can pivot. But some examples may be that uh, as you are getting drowned with information, shall we say, would be, you know, some people are taking their business and converting it into or pivoting into the idea of being able to make masks. Or some are actually being able to take that plastic or that elastic band for the mask. I love this. I, maybe you've seen it. It was about a, a young lady, innovative as all. It hits home with me because it wasn't that she was just trying to come up with an idea for a mask. But you know those, the, uh, but have a clear plastic put inside of the mask. Why? So that whenever the hearing impaired person is at the doctor and they're having their mask on, that hearing impaired person can still interact with the doctor. Or maybe, let's go back a few years, maybe you remember the company Wonder Bread Company. And, and the idea of the Atkins diet. Well, amongst other considerations, yeah, that company Wonder Bread, they had to fight to keep their doors open. They had to pivot with the idea of the Atkins diet being of, of a craze. Uh, what about the guy, I mean, we're coming up on Easter and Mother's Day. And flowers probably aren't being bought too, too quickly or, or at a lot, uh, at a high rate. Uh, of course, too, you've got the, uh, the cards. You have graduations going to be coming up here soon. I caught wind of a company that they're a card manufacturer. And they weren't making just, shall I say, these little bouquets popping up out of the card, you know, when you open it up. But, I mean, it was going to be a large bouquet that was beautifully etched and designed. So here you have, again, my point is people that are taking a skill set that they have and are pivoting on it and figuring out how to, okay, flowers aren't being bought, so I'm going to open up a card and it's going to be that much larger of a bouquet. Or I'm a Wonder Bread company and I have an Atkins diet that is severely impacting me. It's devastating, but you always have options. This time... It's exposing our companies. It's not changing us. You're the same hard-headed or you're the same hard-charging dad, mom, uh, employee, entrepreneur. Just let's take the outcome and make sure that we are prepared for it. It's going to be hard work. I want us to have hustle. Listen. Learn. And Remember, too, I came across this just the other day. We can control certain things. And you probably have heard that saying, control the controllables. And if we had these steps, these action plans, I think it will really will help us. One last story as we come to a, uh, to a close. Maybe you've heard, um, what would a Irish-English explore have to do with who had some Quaker roots have to do with where we are today well absolutely I think that we probably could learn something from a gentleman by the name of Ernest Shackleton and two ladies Margaret Morell and Stephanie Caporell wrote a book called Shackleton's Way and it was really about the idea of a phenomenal story on how Ernest Shackleton it was an explorer adventurer who spent almost two years in 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 Antarctica on uh, on that continent without any opportunity to be rescued, and it goes through the story of his leadership 
And it goes through him having to have no hope for this rescue, but constantly having to learn to pivot, constantly learning how to be flexible and adapt. And he had that drive. He had that courage. He had that resilience. And, and it brings about how he maintained those things over that two years of, again, assuming that he would not be rescued out there on that continent. So as the author stated, and I want to make sure I get this right, his story, in essence, is an inspirational tale about unleashing strengths in individuals that they never knew they had in order to achieve goals from the small to the miraculous. Guys, as, as we end this vi first video, understand that people are counting on you, your family, your colleagues, your partners, your investors. They're counting on you. It's a moral imperative. Get this. It's a moral imperative for you to do all that you legally can to grow. So at this time of the recording, many of us are struggling. Many of us are concerned about where our business is going or, or how long we can last. But I believe that with the with my mission, my vision of creating action steps through this series that you will come out with not just a plan, but series on how to grow your business. I look forward to seeing you in the next video, part one. Thank you.